Welcome back to another Bali COVID-19 update. This is April 11th, 2022, and my name is Bruce. First, let's take a look at the weather. The wind speed is 4.5 kilometers per hour. The temperature is 29.8 degrees, a little cooler than the last few days, thank goodness. And the humidity is 62%, and it is a beautiful day again in Singaraja. Some clouds, but sunny, and the ocean is perfect for snorkeling. Am I going to get out this week? I hope so. Nothing earth-shattering today to talk about. Some interesting things for me. I hope uh, you find them interesting as well. There was an earthquake uh, the other day, a magnitude 4.6 earthquake, and it was down in the south of Bali. We did not even feel it up here, or uh, we didn't in my house anyway, and my wife always feels earthquakes. So if you were down in the earthquake area, I guess it was centered somewhere close to Jimbrana, leave a comment. Did you feel anything? Did anything happen? Dishes fall off the shelf? You know, we get lots of earthquakes here, and as long as they're non-destructive, uh, it's okay with me. I was trying to decide what should I say is the main story today, and I think I'm going to go with just a real simple one. These are really short. This is going to be another short video. Uh, yes, I am sticking with the plan, and so far, so good. Yesterday, I was working on the food videos, and if you didn't see the one on I Am Batutu, uh, take a look. The link is up here. Okay, let's get on with it. The numbers are looking good. Some improvements in the numbers. Nationwide, new cases, 1,071. Okay, that is encouraging. National recoveries, 2,493. National deaths, down to 29. Bali new cases, 32. Okay, so we dropped some too. Bali recoveries, 29, and no deaths in Bali reported. And good news, and vaccinations are continuing ongoing as usual. So with about two and a half weeks to go uh, for the end of Ramadan and for Labaran, everything is good. With the numbers, everything is great with the numbers. Mudik will be starting soon. Some people leave really early, and so we're gonna have to see how that's gonna affect the numbers. Hopefully it will not. Okay, let's get on to the main story. So the main story, serve eight regular international routes flight from Perth lands at Bali, Nurarai Airport. And if you read the comments, you saw that uh, this was mentioned last week by Russell, I think, right? So E. Gusti Nurarai Airport adds to the list of regular international flights by reoperating the Perth Denpasar return flight route served by Jetstar. Okay, Jetstar. I know there was a lot, a lot of canceling of Jetstar leading up to this, but it looks like Jetstar is going now regularly. Flight JQ110, which landed in Bali on Friday at 11.44 WIDA time, became the initial milestone for the operation of the route, which has stopped since March 2020. The flight, Boeing A320, carried 153 passengers and returned later that day, carrying 87 passengers. And based on the schedule, these flights are supposed to operate every day. Okay, I have not checked Jetstar. Uh, I know majority of people that watch this channel are Australians. So is Jetstar doing the everyday flights? According to the president director of the airport managing company, he said after previously there were two cities in Australia that had been connected to Bali and now we have another one. What are the three cities? Sydney, Melbourne and now Perth. And Perth is supposed to be the place where everybody loves Bali and so we should be getting lots of people coming in. And the president director said that with the operation of this route, the airport now serves eight regular international routes, Singapore, Melbourne, Sydney, Tokyo, Kuala Lumpur, Doha, Istanbul, and Perth. And he added Australia is the country with the most cities connected to Bali with three cities. Okay, so good for Australia. And before the pandemic, it was Australia and China going back and forth for where most of the tourists were coming from. And well, we're not gonna be getting people from China for a while, I don't think. And so here come the Australians and that's good news for Bali. And so now there are 10 international airlines flying to Bali. And, well, that's right now. More could be added quickly. What are they? Ruta Indonesia, Singapore Airlines, Malaysia Airlines, Jetstar Asia, Scoot, KLM, Jetstar, Air Asia, Qatar, 
and Turkish Airlines. And well, Emirates is not here, but Emirates is going to be starting up in May, as I talked about the other day. And the Jetstar Group CEO, Gareth Evans, said, we are pleased to be returning to Bali from Perth today after two years. The first flight tickets sold out today give us confidence that Bali will remain as popular with Western Australians as it was before the pandemic. He concluded, prior to COVID, Jetstar operated up to 85 weekly round trip flights to Bali from across Australia, carrying more than 2 million passengers annually and contributing nearly 2 billion Australian dollars annually to Bali's local economy. Okay, wow, we could use that. And some more on airfares, and this is not very good news. Airplane ticket prices are starting to rise. Jakarta Bali flights are getting more expensive ahead of the 2022 Eid homecoming. And so Mudik is coming up and the price of flights is going up. If you are going to be doing domestic traveling, uh, you should pay attention to this. A search result from the Tribune News shows that ticket prices for a number of routes have increased. Some of them are ticket prices for Jogja, Jakarta, Jakarta Surabaya, and Jakarta Bali. Based on a search of the Travel Local platform, the price of flights from Jakarta to Jogja on April 20th around 544,000 rupees. However, the price begins to rise. On April 23rd, the cheapest flight on Lion Air is 869,000. Flights from Jakarta to Bali on April 20th around 813,000. However, the price increased gradually. April 22nd, 1,015,000. And on April 29th, 1,422,000. Huge jump there. The Secretary General of Indonesian National Air Carrier Association said that there are a number of factors leading to the increase in ticket prices. First, he said it's law of supply and demand because the demand is up. Second factor is that for homecoming season, only one way is full while the return trip is relatively empty before Eid and vice versa during the return. So people buy a one-way ticket coming in, not sure when they're going to come back. Then they buy another one-way ticket going back, higher price. Third, the prices of fuel are going up. Currently, the ticket price limit will still follow the ticket price limit regulated in the regulation of the Ministry of Transportation number 20 of 2019 concerning procedures and formulation for calculation of the upper limit tariff for passengers for economy class domestic scheduled commercial air transport. <laughs> okay, that's a mouthful. Okay, what it says is that there are regulations. You can only charge so much for domestic economy flights. A member of the DP Air asked the Minister of Transportation to monitor the price of airline tickets ahead of Eid in order to create reasonable prices for the homecoming flow. So prices are fluctuating and members of DPR asking the government, make sure you monitor this and put sanctions on airlines that are charging too much money. The Ministry of Transportation said that they'll carry out inspections of airline companies that increase the price of economy airline tickets above the set limit. And here's an important story. There were some dog killings that went on, I think, last week uh, down in the, around the Changu area. I did not report on them. A number of dogs were poisoned. I didn't talk about this. It is a problem in Bali. It happens sometimes. It's done officially in order to get rid of rabid dogs. Uh, sometimes people just go off killing dogs. I'm not sure why, and nobody was sure why this was happening there. But it was not that long ago that we had a huge rabies epidemic here. It affected us personally. One of my daughters got bitten by a, a dog, was not vaccinated, and she had to go and go through the rabies shots. And I've had a dog poisoned as well. So this is one of those stories that affects me personally. Preventing rabies cases in Bulang. 4,843 dogs have been vaccinated. So the Bulang Regency government through the Bulang Regency Agricultural Office is carrying out mass vaccinations in all sub-districts in Bulang Regency. This is due to an increase in rabies from 2021 to now. You know that there are a lot of dogs that wander around the streets. Some of them are street dogs. Some of them are people's dogs who they just let wander around. You don't know what, with a lot of these dogs, especially the street dogs, if they've been vaccinated or not. And some of them can get pretty aggro. I've had dogs chase me down the street on my motorcycle. According to the head of Livestock and Animal Health, Imade Suparma, 4,843 dogs have been vaccinated 
both wild and domestic. He said, we started in the red zone and we've moved up to the green zone, which is the schedule that we had planned. Additionally, he said that the Agriculture Service provided animal health posts in each subdistrict with one veterinarian. He said, hopefully this year we will increase the number to speed up the process of implementing the vaccinations. Furthermore, he said, apart from the mass vaccination effort, they are applying food bait and trumpets to stray dogs that are difficult to catch for vaccinations. Not only that, he said, but we've implemented a new method through the rabies vaccination service system in order to reduce the number of cases of rabies in Bulalang. So I hope other regencies here in Bali are doing the same thing. We don't want to go through another rabies epidemic. If you have a dog, make sure that you get it vaccinated and keep an eye on it. Keep your dog safe and healthy. Okay, that is it for today, a real short one. Tonight is Monday night, there's always government announcements on things, and so we may have some word on the upcoming changes for April 15th, the rumor that they're gonna be on April 15th, but April 15th I think is Good Friday, and so I don't know, there may be some announcements tonight about the new visas and the visa prices and how that's gonna go, including the fabled second home visa, which is going to be important for people that want to come and move here. And so stay tuned for tomorrow. If you found this video helpful, useful, informative, non-irritating, <laughs> amusing, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I do the videos now, Monday through Saturday, short 10 to 15 minutes. And on Sunday, we do a cooking video. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe. And I'll see you tomorrow.